Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do an unboxing on this Double Eagle M924 or DMP9. First thing, a uh, slight disclaimer about this video. If you think, my, why is the video kind of changing color? Is there something wrong with my phone? No, there is nothing wrong with your phone. The light fitting I have in this room is one that's got um, lights on it and it's got like little LEDs as like a night light. And <laughs> it, you couldn't even make this up. I can't find the remote. So it's currently going through basically the rainbow cycle of colors. So if you find that there's a slight hint change of color in, that is why it's not your eyes, it's not your phone screen. It is literally the light in this room. And I've got no other options for filming. So I do apologize immensely. Hey guys, and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that usual gubbins, YouTube algorithm, all that kind of thing. The socials are all on the link tree link down below in the description. And the join button will take you to that channel membership, it's totally optional, custom videos, all that kind of way thing. Really appreciate it if you do it. Run out with that. Let's get on with this because I'm excited. Okay, so I am no stranger, or it's no hidden fact that I do like uh, double bell. Double Eagle, I apologise. Double Eagle products. I think they're really good what they're making. Really solid, really good uh, piece of equipment. So it excited me when we, uh, for lack of a better term, someone on my Discord called it the uh, MPX at home. Uh, basically an SMG with a little bit of proprietoriness going off, but I'm going to tell you why that's not a necessarily a bad thing as we go along. So we've got it in this nice blue and yellow box then. So we've got branding there, we've got DES Soft M924. It is the DMP9. This particular model has the Kestrel V2 in it, which is the uh, programmable MOSFET that's uh, done via Bluetooth and things that issue to one. So just a little bit of uh, obviously generic branding all over there. And we have got the black one so spin that round get into this because i'm pretty damn excited full uh disclosure i have been and uh played with this for a couple of games which i can talk about in references of going along and i have done the disassembly as well so i know exactly what i'm talking about as opposed to usual whilst i am doing this so we've got a foam liner which is always nice well protects everything we've got a fully correct manual there she is oh god she's she's pretty uh, so we've got our polish english target and safety information we've got a very handy exploding diagram about the um how everything is uh, is built up together which is particularly handy and useful and then we've got a fully correct manual then that we can uh, look through and talk through it talks about the rla system which i'll talk more about shortly um, obviously select it usage battery access all that kind of stuff so all good and interesting stuff all relevant to the correct model and everything um, i'm pretty excited i'm like almost like just going to wang the you know what away so we've got in there we've got a spare dean's connector if your battery needs one we've also got a allen key which i'm not figured out yet and a adapter as we used to get in get those back in there we've got a cleaning rod we've got our 130 round mag proprietary mag we'll talk more about this shortly but it does look awfully like an mp5 mag and then there she is the absolute beauty look at that thing look how pretty that is get that mag in there that is just goddamn pretty it's really nice the last thing that's in here we have got from factory then we've got my serial number that's on this on the receiver somewhere i assume there we go underneath and it has got the at the factory it was doing 365 fps this one is not because it's been made safe for UK markets. We'll talk about that more in a moment as well. So I'm going to get that out of the way. So look how nice that is. That is pretty damn gorgeous as a piece of kit. So let's get started because I am like really happy to be holding this. So at the front then we have got a metal muzzle brake that is on a negative thread there. So a typical airsoft 40 mil negative thread for various accessories as your need or want. Quite nice one there. Our battery compartment is right here at the front. So it does say here, open. We are just gonna twist that little handle and open it up. And we have got a battery chamber that runs sort of down to more or less the front uh, of the receiver here. We'll explore that after the uh, performance reviews and stuff. Click that back in. We've got a 
flip up sight there at the front, which is both a backup pistol sight. I don't know how well you can actually see that, but basically it's got pistol style sights and you can flick it up and have traditional style sights on there as well, which are quite nice to use. And quite light flick up and down, which is not a bad thing, but it's gonna be easily caught and you've lost your sights. How many of us actually aim down the sights anyway? We have got a full length rail across the top for any accessories that you want to use, as well as I believe it looks like it's M-Lock compatible slots, three on each side and two underneath there for anything else that you've got. Now it is a nylon body. It feels incredibly solid. Now I'm squeezing that with some real pressure and there's virtually no movement in that whatsoever in terms of flex and then moving it. I can see there's a tiny little bit there, but it literally, that thing is solid. It's really solid. There's no creaking, there's no groaning, there's no cheapness to this. You know, this is a very solid piece of kit. Um, and it's not mega light either. You know, you, you're well over, probably a couple of kilograms there in weight. So it's substantial, but not in a way that's not gonna be um, easy to carry all day. You know, you're gonna be able to run this all, all day sort of thing. So coming back then, upper receiver, obviously a little bit of a nice uh, sort of sharp jagged cut to it. Got our ejection port there, which is operated with our charging handle and locks open, beauty. We have got a rotary hop there, so it is rolled down to apply hop and it is one of the double eagle like kind of split rubbers in there, which I'll talk about in a minute after the port performance stuff. Press the bolt release. Oh, look at that. Do that again. Feels nice. We've got an ambidextrous mag catch then that doesn't matter which side we click from, that mag is coming out. The mags are proprietary now. Um, they call it an RLA system. I'm not sure what that stands for. And if I find out by the time I've edited it, I will put the text across the bottom. But basically we've got this little catch on the back here. When the mag is empty, that little thing flicks out. And if you look down into the mag well, there is a little teeny tiny white sort of switch up against this back ledge here, right next to the gearbox. It flicks that and it tells the MOSFET, kill it. And at that point, you have to insert a new magazine and press the bolt release to go again. It should detect it itself, but I have noticed sometimes I just have to press the bolt release just to activate it properly uh, and off you go again. It, it takes me back to the owning the KWA uh, recoil AK where you had to change the mag and rack the charging handle again which made it satisfying uh, to get that shooting again. So uh, we've then got an ambidextrous uh, selector, nice firm push to get that round and clicking into position. We've got a traditional M4 style trigger with quite an enlarged um, trigger guard here, obviously because we've got spare room now because the magwell is so small, we don't need to fit an M4 mag in there, just an MP5 mag in there, or style mag. And then we've come back into a very nicely made pistol grip, real nice texturing on there, stippling on there to, to hold well. Uh, no sharp edges, really comfortable, even without gloves on, that's really comfortable. And then coming into the back then, we've got a traditional style charging handle. We've got a folding stock, which is lift up to fold. Now that's mostly nylon with a metal bracket at the back, which latches onto, that is a rail on the back there. So this screws on via this screw here and uh, basically undo the screw, the stock is removable, so you can accessorize on the back as well. Now this stock is absolutely, I like to be compact and pulled into me. That, for me, is the absolute perfect length for me to shoulder, and, and, and because I like feeling like I, I'm compact and, and, and pulled in. And obviously if I'm in a really tight space, I've got the ability to fold that stock in and I can get even smaller um, as well within that, that shooting arena just like absolutely chuffed a bit so it's finally here and it's finally how i've been seeing sort of um pictures of it for quite some time so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the um sort of shooting tests and everything and then we'll come back and talk about what i found what i've had with it and all that kind of stuff So that's 336 minimum, 340.6 uh, maximum. So what's that like? Four FPS variance, averaging 338. That's pretty stable. About just under 10 half rounds a second. 
pretty standard for a double eagle. Wow. <laughs> Just over 20 rounds a second, really nice and smooth. Very inconsistent, a lot of grease in the mag, but easily over 50 meters when it is uh, catching right. Mag cutoff feature, so this mag's nearly empty, so. Just gonna empty this out. Mag's now empty, so I'm pulling the trigger. Nothing at all. Change the mag, so we can see. Where's the camera? Uh, the mag is empty. Bring in the next mag, which is BB's in it. Mag goes in. Oh, it's detected it, but we should press the bolt release. And off it goes again. Okay, so uh, performance reviews then. So obviously this, uh, from the factory, about 365 FPS. This is the sort of just below 340 for UK markets. What I will comment on there is really tight grouping, sort of less than five FPS grouping. This has probably had over a thousand rounds through it now. Um, so, you know, really, really sort of quite pleased with how tight that grouping is. Really nice FPS as well. Um, in terms of rate of fire, pretty much standard for a, a double eagle then, about 10 and a half ish rounds a second on a 7.4. That's nothing to be sniffed at. You know, that, that's a nice steady rate of fire. Don't forget, folks, it only takes one BB to take a player out, not 300 from a high cap. 11.1 um, obviously came alive and we got that sort of just over 20 rounds a second. Really felt like it was it, it was flying then. It really come alive at that point as, as we're often finding. Um, so I will be running this personally on 11.1s myself. Um, the mag cutoff, as I showed you, as soon as the mag's empty, it does lock off, which is really, really nice. And when I've played with this, I did find that it was every single time it, it locked out without fail. Absolutely no faults with it whatsoever. Now, range, I will comment on. The range is really, really good. However, however, now you may be able to see around the top of there, there is marking. There is a lot of grease oil whatever it is in these mags and when i bought them and i have got quite a few of them i think i bought five extra so i've got six mags in total um the packets you could see the the oil the grease in there now those are still feeding through and i'm still getting a little bit of inconsistency of hops some bbs are obviously uh, lubricated up from the excessive lubricating in there and they're just slipping through the hop with no backspin applied and they're just kind of sh coming out short they're getting maximum sort of 25 ish meters, maybe 30 if I'm really lucky, but I doubt it's that even that far, sort of 20 25 meters. But then when the hop does catch, they is absolutely flying them. Not quite as good as like the, the Delta Armories with the Trinity hop rubber. You know, we're talking sort of 50 55 meters. You know, it's really going that a, a good quality range, but not quite as good as the Delta Armories sort of range. Um, but it's pr pretty damn solid performance it is going to take you you know I've, I've put about a thousand rounds through uh and most of the mags now are most of the way to feeding properly another couple of feeds through and i should be there so just consider what's going to happen i would clean your barrel frequently um in the first sort of couple of game days that you use it just to help clear that grease out and things like that uh is really going to help massively um so performance i was really really happy with um overall really happy with to be to be honest um, in terms of features then, obviously it is a Bluetooth based programmable MOSFET, which I've done a separate video to, which is linked down below. It is a quick change spring. It's not that quick, I'll be honest. You have got to uh, remove this stock with there. You have then got to remove, uh, there's basically five outer screws and one middle screw and this whole back plate comes off. Then you can access the quick change spring system. It's not, it's not terribly difficult and it's certainly easier than removing the whole body. Uh, you know, lifting the gearbox out of the body. Um, but just to be warned, if you do want to do it, it's probably going to take you about 10 minutes time to, to make that change. Um, 
also with, with the need of our screwdriver and a couple of different sizes of Torx bits. I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's Torx 8, Torx 10 and a Torx 25, I think it was, was what I was needed to change the, the, um, the spring in the gearbox. Um, so in terms of batteries, then we'll talk batteries and then we'll do gloved operation then. So the battery compartment, we'll take the little connector off and uh, we'll start with my typical um, shooting test battery. So I've got there the 7.4 volt. Uh, so that's a new Prol, nunchuck type, 2200. I've heard these called butterfly type as well. So I'm just going to slide that in there. That will, or so he said, I thought earlier on, that did fit. Can't make it fit now. There we go. It does actually fit. There is enough room in there to get that in there. You're going to be a little bit cramped getting your wiring in and possibly shorten this wiring down a little bit. But you can, in theory, he says, well, he's juggling it about, you can fit a 2200 milliamp 7.4 volt LiPo in there. Just scratching the sticker. Um, so that's a potential option, but you're going to need shorter wiring than that because there's a bit of an excess. The 11.1 I use, absolutely no chance I'm getting that anywhere <laughs> anywhere near that. That's not even going to fit in its entirety. So then we're on to my typical um, selection of smaller batteries. So we've got two there. I've, I've brought them both. They're both the same uh, 1200 milliamps. They're both the same the length. One's 7.4, one's an 11.1. They are too long to fit in there. You've got about an inch too long length there. So both of those are absolutely no good. So we're then down to, I've got a 1450 7.4 new Prol. That fits in there with excessive room for the wiring to fit in with no issues whatsoever. I've got a 1000 milliamp giant power 7.4. Again, absolutely beautiful that that sits in there. Loads of room for the wiring. And then the one that I'm actually gonna use is this 1100 milliamp 11.1 uh, battery. That will go in there with absolutely no issues whatsoever and plenty of room for the wiring to go in and everybody's happy at that point that that's gone in like that. So I'll take that out and then we're just going to push this little uh, part back in there. I bet you thought I'd forgotten, didn't you, about gloved operation. Box just sliding off. It's because I did. I did forget about it, so I was so carried away and excited. So um, I've decided that I have found my normal unboxing gloves, but I much prefer my mechanics gloves at the minute. So I've put those on for the gloved operation. Again, thanks to the guys on my Discord for this. Um, I didn't do the magnet test with this because basically nothing is metal. And I forgot when I did the uh, Delta Armouries uh, Freya. So in terms of the operation then, I can definitely get the muzzle on and off. I can definitely get the sights up and down without any issues whatsoever and operate those. I can get the mag in, I can operate it from both sides. I can operate that bolt release quite easily, leave that in. Can operate the selector, as you would be able to expect to. I can easily fold that stock and open it again. I can very easily get into that uh, battery compartment as well. Oop. There we go. Changing a battery wouldn't be too much of a difficult. I can access the hop. Now, it is a clicky type hop, which makes me happy. So I actually have got quite a good of feel of how much I'm adjusting it because of the clicks. And that's quite a nice little feature. So just release that. I can even load the mag up. So I get my speed loader in there. You can see in there, there is quite a bit of grease in the top of that mag as well. So I'm pretty happy that gloved operation will be good and easy. Now in terms of the mag itself, you need a speed loader. So that's one of the little sort of, um, it looks like a mag more often than not that you put your BBs in and there's like a plunger on top that you feed it into uh, and just keep filling it up until it stops and you will physically feel that it's, it's stopping. It won't allow any more. Obviously run them out. When it's empty, that will cut off. Change your mag out. And uh, obviously you do need to press your bolt release uh, to get it to acknowledge. So that goes in, you press your bolt release. If your mag is empty that you've just put in, and it's not firing again because you need to hold that in to basically tell it, no, you're going to fire and then it will continue um, and off you go. Uh, I have just thought because I've just filmed separately the um, MOSFET programming guide, which was really quick and easy. You can disable 
the they call it real gun mode so there is just a little checkbox on the settings that disables it so if you ever have an issue with the switch inside it you can disable that mode boom problem goes away if that little switch ever breaks um, at all perfect we'll get back to the main video now the mag is proprietary it does look like an mp5 mag it is not an mp5 mag it will only work with these the hop unit is um, a little bit proprietary as well it's got a very very short um uh loading nozzle to feed out the the mag uh, load yeah loading nozzle i suppose uh to engage with the mag to release the mag out and things like that and the gearbox has got obviously the switch on the front of it which is proprietary but then it is just a generic m4 gearbox after that so your uh, gear set your piston all those kind of things they're all just generic m ar parts uh, version 2 ar parts um, so obviously we'll take a wide range of things it's a standard long shaft motor as well that's in there i just i'm not gonna lie i think it's great i think the form factor is really nice i think the weighting is really good i think it's really solid i think it's got a fantastic feature set plus a bluetooth programmable mosfet on top of that is just absolutely insane i can't fault it at all i have just realized as well there is qd points on the stock there as well um so other than the grease Yes, the battery compartments are a tiny little bit small. I have seen worse battery compartments. There is a bit of proprietoriness going off. The, the receiver is proprietary. You obviously got enhanced size and height to accommodate the wiring. You've got obviously proprietary body and things to accommodate the, the sort of the cutoff switch and stuff like that. So there is an element of proprietoriness going off there, but a lot of it isn't. And what they've, you know, it is greater than some of its parts sort of thing. And I am very, very, very happy with it. And I'm sure you will be too. So I will leave the usual photos at the end. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed it immensely. I can't get, wait to get this out for another game day. Please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.